Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. September 19, 2019, the Cool Billion Edition. First up, Andrew Hill, and his always interesting on management column on the Monday FT, uh, talks about deal making's hidden toll on anxious staff and uncertain staff. And he brings up the uh, topic of Refinitiv, which was the trading and data division of Thomson Reuters. About this time last year, the division was rebranded after the uh, leveraged buyout by Blackstone. Then uh, recently, the London Stock Exchange agreed to buy the company. But as listeners to this podcast know, last week, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and Clearinghouse butted in its own bid for the London Stock Exchange uh, and issuing the refinitive tie-up said that they would uh, not go forward with that uh, purchase. So if you're a refinitive employee, not only you have to worry about perhaps losing your job in the London Stock Exchange, now you have to worry about something else. So uh, you're going to be up in the air for some time. He talks about the loss of productivity It can be as much as 80%, but 60 or 70% per day during this time, uh, the interim time during a merger. In Houston, there certainly uh, people at Anadarko are uh, not getting a lot done uh, right now after the uh, purchase by Oxy. Uh, Next up, in a very troubling article, the Washington Post reports that the New York State Attorney General has exposed over $1 billion in wire transfers by the Sackler family from uh, monies in Purdue Pharma into international financial institutions. Uh, the AG has suggested the family sought to, sought to seal, shield its wealth in overseas bank accounts, most particularly in offshore banking locations. Um, this uh, It's unclear the effect this is going to have on the proposed settlement, which was announced last week where the Sackler family uh, agreed to uh, have a $3 billion payment. But if they're pulling out that kind of money during the pendency of this litigation, you have to believe that they've been pulling out quite a bit more money. Uh, Next up from the Wall Street Journal, what is a conflict of interest? Well, this is about as big as it gets as the Disney chief executive Robert Iger resigned from Apple's board as the company's prepare to compete as Apple is launching its own video streaming services. Apple TV Plus will become available November 1, and this will uh, compete directly with Disney's online streaming service. Uh, In addition, the uh, price point for Apple TV Plus is $4.99, and Disney's plan is $6.99. Both plans start in uh, November. So, uh, you can have conflicts of interest uh, literally at the highest levels of an organization, and it's certainly appropriate for the uh, Disney chief to resign in view of fact their uh, new direct competitions with Apple going forward. And finally, from the New York Times, the Boeing board has called for safety changes after the 737 MAX crashes. A small committee of Boeing's board has been performing its own internal investigation of interviewing company employees, safety experts, and executives, and other industrial organizations in an attempt to understand how the aerospace giant could design and build safer airplanes. The company is expected to deliver its findings to the full Boeing board this week and call for several meaningful changes to the way the company is structured. So uh, it's going to be certainly interesting to uh, see this come out. And uh, it's uh, further interesting, I think, that the board uh, or the subcommittee of the board recognizes that the company's structure is one of the leading problems, which led to the uh, safety issues around the 737 MAX. Siloed information is both antithetical to a uh, compliance program and a safety program going forward. Mike Volkoff and I are back for another episode of Why a Duck, where we take a deep dive into the antitrust division new corporate compliance program. Check it out.